Hi guys, I'm Bobsy and we're essentially just going to continue off from where we left off with our little inventory system here. Uh, essentially, we left off with having the basic of sort of a, a pickup going when we just test pickup. You can see we get it in here and we have a system where we can drag and drop around. Now, there's still a few things that we need. First of all, if we just copy this test item a bunch of times and I'll test pick up this and I'll test pick up this, you'll notice how we get two new ones and you know we can't stack them or anything. So I guess first of all, let's try and work on this stacking logic and just making that work. Uh, so essentially I have this try stack item that we made last time and now let's make it actually do something. Of course, we don't just want to return false always. What I want to try and do is I want to try and find uh, an, an entry in the inventory item data that already contains this item. The issue is we're essentially now going to be checking one to one if item is the same. What we want to be checking is we want to be checking some kind of uh, identifier. Now, luckily for us, we already have an item name. So I'm probably just going to be using that and I'm going to be checking up against name. You can make some kind of unique ID, whatever you want to, but I'm just going to keep it very simple for this. Now for this, we can do item data. Well, it looks like it actually already is trying to check it. But yeah, so the thing is, it's trying to compare item to item. And the issue is we can't do that because they will be separate instances. So what we need to compare is we need to compare the item name like this. So you can essentially just use array.find and then we can see if it actually found any item data. So what we can do is, yeah, if there's no item data, we just already return false. And if there is item data, we'll first of all return true. We'll also take the item data dot amount plus plus, and we'll also want to add it back. Um, we'll want to, of course, initialize it again correctly. And we'll also do want to add it um, back to the array, which is probably why we can't really do this because we need to know what array entry it is. The, the thing is, this is a struct, which means we need to add it back. You could just make it a class and then what we have here will already work. But classes can be a little bit more heavy. They will take more memory. So I'd prefer if we don't do that. Not that I'm too performance focused for these tutorials, but um, you get the idea. What we can do instead is we can try and loop through it. That's probably the more correct way to do it. So we'll do for int i. Oops, as long as that is greater than the or less than sorry than the inventory item data dot length. Then we'll be looping up through it. And we'll first of all just check. Um, let's also just take the data and let's also just check if data is equal to null. We'll just continue. I guess it's never null because it's a struct, so I think it's fine. So what we essentially just do is we do if we can do data dot item is null, for example, then we just want to continue. And then outside of the loop also we just want to return false just so we have that. And then inside a loop in here, we want to return true. This is essentially if we found an item. Now we also want to check if the data.item.item name aligns with the item the name that we've been given in here. If it does not, we also want to continue. So now I just continue. And now it essentially means we found the same item, which is when we can do what we did before, essentially. Um, so let's not use this item data anymore, but let's use this data instead. And now we want to go into the inventory data at position i and we want to reapply the data essentially with the changes we just made um and i don't want to do we'll do date oh sorry we'll do data dot amount like that okay so now it should essentially be stackable when we try and at least add more in a row so let's try and do that let's go here and let's try and add them so let's do test pickup now let's go to this one and do test oh i did edit script my bad test pickup Oh, and as we can see, it's still just added one and one. Now I wonder why that is, because they should have the very should very much have the same name. So I guess something else went wrong. Let's have a look. The item is indeed getting set to. Oh, I guess it's because the item is getting destroyed. So we can't actually store the item reference directly like this. I guess we have to store the item name. So I can store the item dot name, and we'll have to store the item name with the item dot item name, and we'll have to compare those up here, of course, as well. Uh, which means we can do here if string that is null or empty with the data dot item name, then we continue. Or otherwise, we just compare the name one to one like this. And I think that should do the trick. So let's try it now. Again, I hope this makes sense. It's because this is essentially the item that exists in the world. But obviously, when we destroy it from the world like this, we don't have the reference anymore. So we can't really rely on that. So let me hit play again. Let me go ahead and I'll test pick up an item i'll test pick up another item still doesn't work okay well that's interesting let's try and figure out why that is i'm going to try and see when we stack an item we'll essentially check through um and let's check here so let's do just do debug.log and i'll just type in one I'll type in two i'll type in three just so we can see how far it essentially gets i imagine it we're never going to see three i'm wondering if we're ever going to see two that's my big question here Let's go here and let's try and add it. Now, in this case, we'll only ever see 32 ones. That makes sense because that's the first one. Now, in the second one, 
we do indeed see it too which means it is actually comparing the name oh that's because i'm comparing the wrong name that's my fault <laughs> i was comparing the game object name so this should now fix it i just need to come be not comparing dot name but dot item name instead now let's try it once again i'll go in here i'll test pick up the item i'll test pick up the next item and there we go now we can see it's stack two and we essentially have yeah two in one stack here so i can test pick up that i can test pick up these two boom and now we have five cool so that's essentially working i can drag and drop them around and you can see if you miss the drag and drop it'll also go back awesome that's a good start now we have the first kind of stacking now the second kind we also want is obviously we want to also track when items are moved around now one thing i never actually got to test properly first time around was i wanted to see if we can visually see what's happening in here um so let me just try and add a test item like this and go into the inventory and as you can see now this is the test cube um, but you can see when we move it around it, it won't remain the test cube uh, it'll essentially just uh, remain well it will remain the test cube but as you can see it doesn't move around in the elements as we'd expect when we move it around here we essentially want it moving around in the array out here uh, and now the way that we can do this is we can find it and move it essentially to where the new slot is so first of all we'll find we'll find the new slot index which we'll just do by slots finding the index of and the slot that's been fed through here and then what we'll have to do again uh, is we'll essentially have to um, yeah also categorize the old slot index that's correct so it finds the index by doing a search of the inventory item matching the item and then lastly we essentially want the uh, old slot index of course if the old slot index is minus one this is a fine error ai is really doing a good job here but essentially going back to non-ai what we want to do is now we want to clear out old data and set the new data so i want to do um, so we do underscore inventory data with the old slot index uh, will essentially be equals to uh, and we'll just set it equals to default which will essentially just set it to sort of a new version of this struct that just has no data uh, popularized so that should do that and we'll do um, we'll essentially take oh sorry and we of course need to store the data so we need to uh, store the old data and then of course after we clear it then we can add it back to the inventory data to the new slot index with our old data setting that as essentially our new data I hope that makes sense. What we do is just to go through it very quickly is we get the two indices, the old and the new. We store the data of the old and we essentially then wipe the old and add the new. So this should now hopefully make it move around as we drag and drop. So now let's try and test pick up here. So I'll test pick up like that. Go back to the intro and I can see the test cube is the first one. But as I drag and drop it, now you can see the test cube is the second one. And you can see as I move it around, it'll move around essentially in the inventory on the right side. So that means that this works. Cool. Well, now we have a drag and droppable item system. I'm, I'm very happy with this. This is, again, the first time I've ever added anything like this. So I'm pretty happy with this. Now let's just add a way for us to just easily open and close it. I'll just add a canvas group to this. I think that's the easiest way for now to go about it. And what I'll essentially do is in the inventory manager, I'll just have us reference the canvas group. I'll do serialized fields, private canvas group. And this will just be our canvas group. Like that. And then on awake, first of all, I just want it to not be visible. So let's do blocks raycast false and also canvas group dot alpha is equal to zero and then we can just quickly add like a, some input let's do it down here so let's do it on update if input dot get key down let's do key code let's just do dot tap which i think a lot of people are used to and then if you hit tap we'll essentially just toggle um whether it's open or not uh, the way that we can figure out if it's open or not we can uh, just make a bool uh Let's do this open and then yeah we essentially just check the alpha and then we can just change the blocking raycast whether depending on whether we're open it's open or not uh, so this should close it by default um, and let's maybe actually just make a private void toggle inventory um, and let's do a bool in here for whether it should toggle or not let's do it like this and then let us copy and paste this in here I think this might be inverse now, but let's do it like this. Uh, let's do if it's not open, like so. And then up here in toggle inventory in the beginning, we can just also call that toggle inventory defaults. Okay. Now we should be able to toggle our inventory with tab, I think. Unless I inverted the logic, which is entirely possible. But I think this should do the trick. Uh, and of course, I didn't assign the canvas kind of group. Let go, assign, say play. Uh, and this indeed does not work. 
Oh, actually, I think I am inverting the logic wrong. Uh, I, shouldn't, I need to be doing it here because I'm doing it in the beginning. Oh, I'm going to hit play. And now you can see when I hit tap, it'll open up. When I hit tap, it'll close it. And here we can also just pretty easily control the mouse if we wanted to. So let's just do that. Let's just take it away from here. And let's just paste it into here. And essentially the lock mode will depend on whether we are toggled or not. So if it is toggled on, the cursor lock mode will be none. So we'll do cursor lock mode to none. Otherwise it'll be locked like so. And whether it's visible should also depend on whether it toggles. So there we go. Now the mouse should also be toggled on and off. So hitting play. And there we go, our mouse is gone. When I hit tab, our mouse comes back. When I hit tab, it goes away again. Cool. Okay, so this seems to work very well. And I think in the next video, we can work on actually picking up stuff and maybe also dropping stuff might be a good idea. And we can essentially work on fletching out the items a little bit more and making that nice and working on making them actual resources and whatnot. Cool. Well, I hope so far you've learned something. I hope this is useful and is what you're looking for. And uh, yeah, please do leave a like, comment, subscribe. Remember to join the Pernet Discord. Link will be in the description and in the top of the comment section. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.